Well, the holiday season is officially upon us. The season of Advent begins today. So in the religious cultural sense, we're just starting, but if you've been watching the ads on television or in the Star News, it started a long time ago. But for us, this is the season of, of Christmas, of honoring that birth, that remembrance of the vibrant life that lives within each one of us. And in at Unity of Wilmington this year, what we're looking at and focusing upon are the gifts of the season, the gifts, the big gifts that have come as a result of the birth of Jesus of Nazareth. So for our Christmas candlelight service, we're talking about the gifts of the Magi. And before that, we're going to honor and celebrate the gift that the Master Teacher Jesus gave us the biggest, greatest commandment of all, the commandment of love. And today, we're going to look at another big gift that we receive from the Master Teacher. And that is probably the most well-known and off-sided prayer in all of humankind. We call it the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer was given to us by Jesus of Nazareth, and then it got translated, and then it got translated, and then it got translated some more. And do you know the phrase, lost in translation. translation? So sometimes that happens. I went to the internet just to find a few things, and I found this. Our Father who art in heaven, how'd you know my name? <laughs> Give us this day our jelly bread. <laughs> forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those who put trash in our baskets. <laughs> and finally, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us some email. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't resist. I really couldn't resist. Aramaic was the native tongue. It was the lingua franca, the word of the day, the language of the day at the time of Jesus of Nazareth. And from the time that he spoke this prayer in Aramaic, it was translated. So in the Protestant, in the Catholic tradition, it was translated from the Aramaic to the Greek, and then from the Greek to the Latin, and from the Latin to the English, to form what Protestants today call the Lord's Prayer and what Catholics call the Our Father. So it, it's not really original when, when you hear Our Father who art in heaven. We have scholars today like George Lamsa and Neil Douglas Klotz and Rocco Errico who've gone back to the most ancient documents, the most ancient texts, the most ancient scrolls they can find, and they've put together as near as they can figure, as near as they can believe, to be most likely what Jesus said. And if it read aloud today, it would sound something like this. I know, I'm in charge. It sounds something like, like, wait a minute. Yes? No? It got clicked. Okay, wait, we'll go back. And then we'll go forward. Here we go. So close your eyes or keep them open and just imagine. Tip tema hutach, tip erutach. Ich mag de bishmaya, ten af ber a. Lach man de mer a, hablan yoma den umacha. Ush bach lang hobai. Ich mag de af shabachnan chaibai. We out aila, le resina. Ella et salem, mi misha. Now the translation that we use here at Unity of Wilmington didn't come from George Lamza or Neil Douglas Klotz or Rocco Errico. And quite frankly, I don't know where or who translated the version that we use here in this spiritual community. But what I know from the feedback that I receive, the, from what people tell me, that it's appreciated, the version that we have is appreciated for its simplicity and its beauty, and most important, taking 
Our prayer in English, directly from the Aramaic, invites us to let go of any embedded theology that we had from our upbringing or even from our culture. And if you're Catholic in particular, but in whatever tradition you've come from, using an Aramaic translation also allows us to release any emotional link that we have between prayer and penance or prayer and punishment. It's, it's quite liberating to use this translation that comes directly from the Aramaic and hasn't actually played a game of telephone all through the centuries. In Aramaic, the root of the, Lord, of the word prayer is slaw, and slaw simply means to trap or to set a trap. So slatha, which is the word for prayer, then means setting a trap for God. And I like this because what it's saying is we open our hearts and minds and we are receptive to catching thoughts and ideas that come from God. The other translation or another layer of translation of slaha also means to focus in, to tune into, just like you would on a radio dial if you're old enough to know that. <laughs> but just like you would tune in so the signal is the clearest. That's what prayer is. It's about bringing us back into an awareness of our oneness with God. It's about letting go of whatever else is going on and attuning ourselves to the divine. Prayer itself is a consciousness conditioner. It's something that we say not to change God, because God is pretty unchangeable. God is these definite divine ideas. God is the kingdom of heaven. It's not to change God. It's to change us. The real gift and the purpose of prayer is to shift our consciousness from whatever appearances are showing up in our lives and bringing us back to the real deal. Whenever we have something going on, prayer brings us back. It attunes us. It focuses us. It sets a trap for God ideas and God thoughts to come back into our lives. Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore, when things got difficult in his life or when he felt challenged, he would say the Lord's Prayer 15 times. 15 times because he knew it would condition his consciousness to come back to his awareness of his oneness with God. There are many gifts in and around the Lord's Prayer. For one thing, Jesus spoke it in Aramaic. The people of his time all spoke Aramaic where he lived. In the Jewish tradition, only some people knew Hebrew. So here was a prayer that was for everybody, that everybody could learn, and it made sense from them. They didn't require a translation. The other gift or another gift of the Lord's Prayer is that it was a short prayer. It wasn't long. It wasn't complicated. It didn't require a priest to recite it with you or for you. It didn't require a priest to do a call and response. It was something that was short enough that it could be memorized. Another gift of the Lord's Prayer is it was like a mini gospel. It encapsulated a summary of all the entirety of Jesus' message. Think like God, act like God, and you will live like God. All of that is in the Lord's Prayer. It's the keys to the kingdom. Another gift of the Lord's Prayer is that it's a formula for transformation. When we use this structure, when we fill in our own blanks in prayer, our lives will transform. Our lives will change. Emmett Fox, who's a New Thought writer, was a New Thought writer, said in Sermon on the Mount, the great prayer is a compact formula for the development of the soul. It is designed with the utmost care for the specific purpose so that those who use it with understanding will experience a real change of soul. So not only changing ourselves, not only changing our physical body or our conditions, it will change our soul. 
The only progress that matters is the change of the soul. The mere acquisition of fresh knowledge received intellectually makes no change in the soul. The Lord's Prayer is especially designed to bring this change about. What a gift. What a gift. And we get to celebrate it just as we celebrate the birth of Jesus of Nazareth this month. So what I've done is I've taken the Aramaic Lord's Prayer that we do, the translation that I put in a mental column, and then on this far right column, I've put the invitation or the structure that shows that it's a formula. So it's a whole lot of words. <coughs> Be prepared for the next slide. If you want a copy of the slide, you just let me know later. No problem. <laughs> See what I mean? I didn't want you to be overwhelmed. But we can pray about that if you want. <laughs> Father, mother, birth, or breath of all. Abba is the word that Jesus used, which means parent, both father and mother. Allaha is breath. And what he was saying was his favorite name for God. So when we begin as a formula, all we have to do is say our favorite name for God. Nikki mentioned 1,700 names. We've got a lot to choose from. I happen to let go. Create a space inside us really means let go of the outer, focus our thoughts on the inner. Let oneness now prevail, affirm that oneness, that union, and claim that only good, uppercase G, only good is in this situation. Your one desire is then talking about, let's look at the bigger picture beyond my personal interest. What would that be? What's the bigger picture? It's the kingdom of heaven, of joy, of love, of peace, of harmony, of compassion. It's that bigger picture. So what's my divine desire? And then it's a statement of abundance. Bread in the culture of the time of Jesus was not only something they ate every day, it was a symbol of abundance. If you had a lot of bread, it meant you were wealthy because you could not only feed your family, you could feed your friends. You could feel, feed people you don't even know. It was that never-ending source of nourishment just like our spirituality. So the metaphysics is just like our spirituality. We live in an abundant world, and sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that. <laughs> Untangle the knots is about forgiveness, releasing any plaguing inner tensions that keep us bound up, that keep us knotted, that are obstacles or blockages to our divinity. And the next step is, what do I need to repent? What do I need to change? What inappropriate choices, ignorance, misunderstandings do I need to say have no power over me? And then step in and affirm. What do I see with the eyes of God? If I could look at this, uh, this situation or this person and only use the eyes of God, what would I see? And then commit to nourishing these seeds that we plant in prayer, these ideas that we plant in prayer. Commit to nourishing them. Commit to expanding them. Commit to giving them positive attention so that they'll grow in the world. Because from the moment we pray, we're setting our intention, we're planting the seeds of joy, of love, of peace in the world. And in the culture of Jesus, it ends with that oral contract. When two people were haggling over something in the marketplace, when they came to an agreed upon price, they'd say, amen? Yeah, amen. That means I agree to do this. And so it is. We can't go back and renegotiate. So we're not going to go back and renegotiate for God when we're holding the highest, highest of high watches. So let me give you an example of how it looks when we plug in the formula. So I'm going to give you an example, and then we're going to do one together. I'll get the words a little bigger so we can all see them. So my favorite name for God is God. And... I do have a very harmonious relationship with Nikki because that's our agreement and our commitment to be that way. But I also want to remind you in case you forgot, because sometimes I forget, that we're both humans. And so sometimes the relationship between us is not harmonious. So if or when or as we come into that situation, I can have a prayer following this formula. I can say, God. I let go 
of what's going on between us. I let go of any tension that I have, and I turn my thoughts to you. I turn my thoughts to that place inside me that reminds me of peace, that reminds me of a beautiful summer day, that reminds me of the beauty and the compassion that you are. I claim that only good is present between Nikki and myself. I claim that there's only good in Nikki and that there's only good in me. And I state my desire, and my desire is so that Nikki and I can have harmony between us. And it's a harmony that I want for the whole world. I want every relationship to have beautiful, peaceful, energizing, vibrant harmony. I know that the world out there is a reflection of where I am right here, so I'm willing to begin here in me. My statement of abundance is, there are plenty of good relationships in the world. There are an abundance of divine ideas that I can apply in this situation right here and right now. I don't have to come up with them by myself. I can open myself up to the universe for the next great idea, and I'm ready, God, right now. I forgive myself for being anxious. I forgive myself for wanting to jump over. I forgive myself for trying to rush to a solution. I release any un realistic expectations I have of Nikki and for Nikki. My affirmation is I see Nikki as whole and complete. I see myself as whole and complete. I commit to nurturing my wholeness. I commit to nurturing Nikki's wholeness and I commit to nurturing the wholeness that's between us. And so it is. So you see how I followed the formula? And see how it turns something that could go somewhere into a whole different global experience? So I'm going to ask Nikki bring a flip chart up, and I've asked Vicki to write. <clears throat> and then the rest is up to <coughs> us as a community. So think of something that you think we might spend our prayer attention with. Okay? Because we're just going to do one, and whoever shouts out first gets their way. World <laughs> peace. We're not there yet. Oh. <laughs> the world peace works for me. Tax reform. Tax reform. <laughs> world peace works for me. <laughs> Because if we can have it in the world, we can have it in our tax system, for sure. Okay, so favorite name for God? Jehovah. Spirit. 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 Okay, we can pray again, you know, another time. We got lots of names. Okay, so Spirit. Uh, how do you let go of the outer, and how do you focus on the inner? Prayer. 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 And what does that look like? Meditation. 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 And what does meditation look like? Like what? Give me an example. I turn within. I turn within. Okay, I take a breath. I turn within. I close my eyes. Energy. Silence. I think I take a breath. I close my eyes. I go within. Because yes, that's what this is. It's focusing. So what is our divine desire? Expectation. Hmm, expectation. Our divine desire is an expectation for every person. Oh God. Harmony. Our divine desire is harmony. Love. It's an expectation of harmony. Our divine desire is love. Understand. Our, desi our divine desire is oneness. understanding. Oneness. Oneness. And oneness is Okay, hang on, because she's going to catch up. Love, understanding, wholeness, oneness, and wholeness. Well, yeah, wholeness works. Okay, I forgive myself and others for being human, being human. <laughs> not for, who I want to for forgetting, projections, for projections. This is untangling a lot of knots. <laughs> <laughs> anger. Yeah, anger. 
Her okay, so she's like uh, for blame for anger sin for being human for being human for thinking separate Ooh, for being human and thinking we are separate. Okay, and then what well, what thinking do we want to release or change? I release my negative judgment. judgments. I release my negative judgments. Feelings, stubborn, feelings. anxiety. And my anxiety. <laughs> See why we need a lot of prayer? <laughs> so did, did you get judgment, feelings, fear? fear. Okay, and what would we see if we could only see with the eyes of God? Perfection. Unity. Action. Compassion. Okay, wait. Perfection. Unity. Love. Love. Oneness. We're back to that. <laughs> it's good. Okay, I see perfection. Unity. Love. Love with an uppercase L. Acceptance. Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Innocence. Ooh, innocence. Isn't that sweet? Whoever said it, that's very sweet. Okay, I like sweet prayer. Mm -hmm. And then our commitment is to trust. Trust. Have Hold faith. the high watch. <coughs> our commitment is to. Oh, she's ready. I commit. And mm -hmm. Hmm? To remain open-hearted. To remain open-hearted. So, trust. Your faith. To op remain open-hearted. To allow. Peace to be. I, I allow, and then on the next line, write peace to be, because that's where we started. Okay. Are we ready? If you can see it, say it, and if you can't see it, hold the space while the rest of us. Spirit. I take a breath and close my eyes and go within. Our divine desire is love, understanding, oneness, and wholeness. I forgive others for blame, anger, and human, and thinking we are separate. I release my negative judgment, feelings, and fear. I see perfection, unity, love, acceptance, innocence. I commit to trust, remain open-hearted, to allow peace to be. And so it is. So it is. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful prayer we have created. Holding the world in safety and security in a way that with our own tax structure honors each person. <laughs> it can happen in a way that we recognize our oneness with God every time we look at another person. Loving the highest and best in all people, drawing to us the highest and best people. <laughs> Appreciating the peace that does exist in the world and drawing to us a greater experience of that peace. We are powerful manifestors. Amazingly powerful manifestors. I'm going to invite the choir to come up because what we're going to do is ride this wave of peace. We're going to ride this wave of prayer of trusting and allowing and understanding, of releasing, of forgiving,
and come into a time of meditation. Thank you for your prayer.